think uh, it's something we often take for granted is that simple connection. Yeah. Um, and, and you're going to give us some tips on building those one-on-one -on -one relationships. Yeah, yeah, because connecting is one of those things that no matter where we are in ministry, it's one of those crucial things we need to be doing. Mm. And so um, the first one I'd say is be current, but be you. Yeah. I think it's in important to be current. And by, by being current, I mean the same way that like when Apostle Paul in Acts 17, before he started reaching out to Athens, he walked around and he looked at the idols they were worshiping. He didn't worship the idols. He didn't go up on the high places and do what was going on up there, but he familiarized himself with what was going on. And there, as he talks to the people later, he's actually quoting the pagan poets. So, I mean, he kind of knew the, the Lady Gaga lyrics of the day, that kind of stuff. He, he was familiar with it. And so, and, and so before anybody jumps in and said, I'm not saying go out and buy, you know, uh, you know, Rihanna's new, you know, album and, and listen to Eminem all the time in your car. I'm, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying be familiar so that, you know, if a kid comes up and, and if a bunch of kids are talking about Gangnam style, you're like, oh, oh Gangnam, you know, yeah. you don't have to yeah. be able to do the horse dance, you know, but uh, you should at least know that there was this video that was like, you know, for months at a time, this popular video, you know, and, and we should be familiar. I love, I love how you're saying, let's be current, let's be relevant, let's figure out where they're at, but still be you. Yeah, because that doesn't mean, oh man, I'm going to start dropping my pants real low and be like, yo, what's up? You're all up in my business. And they'll be like, dude, you're old. You know, I mean, we still got to be, we still got to be ourselves and it's okay to be ourselves. If we're a little bit nerdy, then fine. Talk about Star Wars, you know, whatever. But you know, um, it's good to be current, know where they're at, but at the same time still yeah, be ourselves. So second thing I've got is uh, when we initiate content, um, I say initiate contact, but think five minutes ahead. And the reason why is because I know myself, this is an error I used to make. I'd get out there on the front lines and let's say I was on campus. I'd go up and immediately a kid would walk up and be like, what are you doing here? And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, uh, 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 and I didn't have an answer. Yeah. You know, and guaranteed if you go on campus, they're going to ask you one or two questions. Who are you? Or what are you doing here? That's always what kids ask yeah. you. And so if you think five minutes ahead, if you go, I know someone's going to ask me, who are you and what are you here? And a lot of youth pastors, if they're there for a church or something, they go, who are you? Youth pastor will be like, uh, and also they'll be thinking, should I say I'm from the church? Right. I don't know if I'm from the, uh, I just like kids. And they'll be like, <laughs> dude, that's creepy. Yeah. You know, uh, no, I, I mean, I love them. I mean, I want to touch them. You know, it's like, ah, you know, yeah. so you got to think five minutes ahead. Yeah. You know, you, uh, you and, and if you do, you think about those things and you'll think about like, hey, how am I going to answer that question? You know, um, and what's the next question from there? Um, so think five minutes ahead. Sounds simple, but it's very practical, very yeah. helpful. Well, good, good. Yeah. Um, number three, I'd say ask well-placed questions. Um, the best thing I like to do is I don't want the attention on me. I want the attention on them. So the best way to do that is ask them questions and then shut up. Okay. <laughs> so, so ask good questions. Um, one example might be uh, just be observant. Look on their shirt, you know, and if, if they're wearing Assassin's Creed, be like, oh, what system are you playing on, you know, yeah. and start asking them questions about it. I remember this guy once came up and uh, I, I was uh, about to speak at this youth event in Canada and there's all these kids there and I was hanging out for about an hour beforehand and I'm just sitting at this table and I'm, I don't know any of these kids, I know nothing about them and this kid walks up and sits down at this table and he's wearing a shirt that says, The Beatles. Yeah. And I mean, I'm like, now Beatles, I'm not a big fan, but are you a Beatles fan or the shirt was free or what, you know? Uh, and I won't even tell you where the conversation went, but five minutes later, I'm sitting there and dude is telling me everything there is about the Beatles, all the albums. And I'm just sitting there just listening, yeah. you know, yeah. wishing he would stop talking about the Beatles. No, but yeah. you know, the, the, that's my goal is I know that there's always a kid is waiting to talk about something. Yeah. Just find out what that is, you know, discover that and ask those questions. And what, what better way to make them feel valued, that you care yeah. about them, you know, that you want to hear from them what they care about. And so immediately you start off that relationship saying, I am someone who cares about you because I'm willing yeah. to listen. And, and it helps if you notice, you know, you see a big old kid in a football jersey, whatever, and you're like, so do you like video games? Now he might, you know, yeah. you know, same thing. He's wearing a Star Wars shirt. It's like, hey, gee, you know, see the Pittsburgh game the other day? You know, I mean, just kind of go with what you see right there, totally. you know, you know, and, yeah. and, and do that. So ask well-placed questions. Um, I'd like to also use controversy. And by using controversy, I mean, um, when it comes to connecting with young people, I'm trying to get them talking. And a good way to talk is talk about things that might be controversial, might be a little edgy. Uh, if you're at a school where a dance was just canceled because too many kids were grinding or whatever, I'd start asking questions about it. I'm like, well, so that dance was canceled. What, what's up with that? Yeah. What happened? And I just start asking questions. What do you think? And it's fun because if you get kids talking about, oh man, it sucks because only a couple kids, really? Well, how many, honestly, how many kids out there are, and 
you can find out so much if you ask something where there's a little passion behind it. Um, sometimes I, I do that as a parent. I got three teenagers myself, 15 years old, 17 and 19. Um, I remember once there was that YouTube video on of the redneck dad who his daughter pasted something yeah. bad on Facebook. Yes. So he takes her laptop <laughs> and he shoots it yeah. right there. And he's yeah. like, yeah, so, you know, this is, you know, and it was hilarious. So I, I asked my daughters, I'm like, have you seen the YouTube video of the redneck dad who busts a cap in the laptop. And they're like, no, let me see it, let me see it. So I showed it to them, and when it was done, I'm just like, so what do you think? You think he was right? And then I just shut up. The, my, the two girls, my girls are like arguing. No, he was, uh-uh, the girl was right. Yeah. And I'm like, well, honestly, what do you think? And I just would ask a question, and they would go. We talked for 45 minutes wow. about parental guidelines. Now, any parent, any youth worker knows, if you walk up to a group of kids and go, hey, for the next 45 minutes, let's discuss parental guidelines. They'd be like, get out of here, you know? But I just said, have you seen that YouTube video with the redneck who killed the laptop, you know? Yeah. So sometimes use those things that get them sparked. Totally, find discussion starters, yeah. step back, let them take it, and then learn a lot about them. You, you can, and just sit there and take notes, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, finally, use names. I know that sounds basic, but it's amazing how powerful names are. The other thing that's funny is some people always, when I share this, I like to share these in this order. Sometimes names are the last thing I do. A lot of people, and, and this just depends on you. This is just me. Maybe yeah. this only works for me. I sometimes find when I talk with kids and I'm asking them questions and I talk and after a conversation, sometimes the last thing I'll do, I'll say, hey, by the way, I'm Jonathan. And they'll be like, oh, I'm Chris. It's like, oh, cool. And I'll walk away because it's like, it's kind of like we've talked and now I'm like, all right, hey, I actually want to know your name. I mean, it sounds funny, but yeah. that's, that's the way sometimes, because you can walk up and like, oh, I'm so-and-so. Sometimes they're like, whoa, sales guy, yeah. easy, yeah. back. So sometimes I just wait for the name. And then the cool thing is once you got that name, and if you're bad at names, when you walk away, write down, dude with big fro, Chris, you know, whatever. <laughs> write down the name, you know, dude with crazy glasses, you know, whatever. And write it down. And the next time you see him, be like, Chris. And it's amazing. He'll be like, Names are powerful, and yeah. anybody who uses mystery knows that. So yeah. if you can use names, it's a powerful thing. It's a tool for connection. So these are just some of the things as we get out there, as we're thinking ahead, Absolutely. as we're asking questions, using names, helps us maybe connect with those kids, get to know them a little better.